Hello, everyone, and welcome to Interviewing Skills for the Financial Services Industry webinar presented by the CFP Board Career Center. I am Dr. Lisa Andrews, and I will be presenting the webinar to you this afternoon. Uh, just a few housekeeping details for you. If you experience any issues with the audio for this presentation, or if it appears that the slides displayed don't match up with what we're speaking about, try refreshing your webinar console. And to do that on a PC, you press F5. If you're using a Mac, press Command-R. Please use the question and answer function on your screen to ask questions. And you can submit a question at any time during the webinar. And at the end, um, we will answer the question. And if I don't get to your question today during the broadcast, we will follow up to provide you an answer. So um, we are also recording the webinar. So it will be available on our website. OK, let's, let's begin. We'll begin with our agenda for the day. We're going to start with preparation. What is it that you need to do before the interview even starts? And then action, what you need to know to really ace the interview. And follow up, the interview doesn't end until there's a job offer. I'll give you some information about the Career Center and its services. And then we'll have time for question and answer. All right, let's move forward to preparing for the interview. So you should know yourself and what is on your resume. Um, you should know the industry and the company inside and out. You should know about who will be interviewing you. You should know the job description. And you should know the location and do a dry run. First, you should know that if you are being interviewed, the employer considers you to be a top candidate for the job. Employers don't have time to interview dozens of candidates. Your resume has been scrubbed along with other candidates, and you have been chosen as one of probably three to four candidates. Your job now is to win the job. You're only competing against a few others and, of course, yourself. So be prepared to answer questions about every job on your resume, even something that is in the past, maybe even the distant past. You'd be very surprised at what employers will want to know more about. And it's important to get some intel on your interview team so you can ask thoughtful questions of them or just connect with them initially in the pre-interview banter that takes place when you first arrive. For example, you may find out that somebody went to Penn State University, so you may want to mention how the football season was or something like that, or anything else you can relate to them or in a personal way to establish any kind of rapport. Then you'll want to be prepared to answer questions about how you can fulfill the qualifications they are asking you for in the job description based on your past achievements. Remember that past behavior is a good predictor of future behavior, and that is the theory. So in terms of doing a dry run, you know, traffic patterns, public transportation concerns or issues may come up. You should know what that looks like before you leave and leave plenty of time. If you are very early, find a nearby coffee shop or the lobby of the building to review your notes or sit in your car to wait and only go into the building when you're about 15 minutes out of your interview time. So next, you should really know yourself. And knowing yourself involves knowing what kind of firm you see yourself working in. Would you like to be in a res registered investment advisor firm, an independent broker dealer, a bank, an insurance agency, a wirehouse, a regional broker dealer? or a direct provider. You should also know what kind of positions appeal to you most. Is it financial advising, a call center, direct support, indirect support, or a financial analyst? And then finally, what are you, your unique abilities? Is it sales, management, relationship building, or analytical skills? So different types of firms have different business models and tasks that go with them. Don't apply for a position unless you are sure you know what you're getting yourself into. Do you want to be more client-facing, or do you prefer analysis and corporate finance? Do you want to work in a team environment or more independently? Are you in concert with the type of products that are offered by the firm? Do you know what their past performance has been? And how have you handled your own finances? Believe it or not, you may be asked. 
be able to provide concrete examples of your unique abilities. Any numbers or percentages really bring your stories to life. For example, it's one thing to say you increase sales from one quarter to the next, but it's another to say you increase sales 25% from one quarter to the next. Think about the skills required for the position and try to work those skills into the interview answers. But don't stray too far from the questions you're being asked. Employers want you to answer the question you're being asked, not the answers you want them to know. Next, you should really know the company and the industry as well. Become a super fan. And when I say become a super fan, I mean really engross yourself in the finance field. You should be reading trade publications and news, news, newspapers regularly. In addition, you should be reading blogs, business sections, and watching television shows on economics and finance. You should try to attend some industry conferences or events. In addition, you should really scour the company's website. Look for any press about the company. Again, as I mentioned earlier, find out who will be interviewing you. Search LinkedIn as well as the company website for their bio. Find out what the leadership structure of the company is. And finally, how does the position you are interviewing for fit into the organization? So just getting back to becoming a super fan, you know, while you're interviewing, learning all you can about the finance field should really become your new hobby, really kind of a part-time job. You also want to do some investigation of the firm you're interviewing with. So by looking at the press, you can find out if there's any skeletons in the closet, controversial moves, a merger in the making. And what type of business model are they? How do they make money? Is it through products and commissions, gathering assets, so fees, financial planning fees, or a combination of any of these? This could determine whether you actually want to interview with them in the first place. And you should only interview for positions that you would be willing to take if offered. Having said this, during the interview, you may decide the position isn't for you after all. And I'll talk about this more a little bit later. But you should never use formal interviews as practice. That is what mock interviews are for. It's important to know how the hierarchy is structured within the organization and how you would fit in. Will you report to one person or more than one and how will you deal with that? So a little bit more about interview preparation. You should review the job description thoroughly. How many of the requirements do you meet or exceed? What are some areas of weakness you will have to explain? I suggest printing a copy of the job description and highlighting the major requirements. Then develop stories from your own experience that demonstrate how you fulfill those qualifications. Remember that employers are looking for the person that is the best fit for the position. The person who most closely matches what they have laid out in the job description is the person who will be offered the job. And be honest in your own appraisal of yourself. As I mentioned earlier, do a dry run to the interview site. This is a must. You should purchase a conservative interview suit and have it tailored. It really should fit very well. You only really need one or two interview suits and just recycle them. And you don't have to break the bank to get one. But the finance industry is conservative. So for men and women, dark, or, dark blue or black is best. I would avoid pinstripes until you get the job. For men, choose a conservative tie pattern. You can wear a red tie, but a loud pattern is not OK. Women should accessorize minimally one set of earrings, simple necklace, pearls, a watch, and a wedding set is fine. You don't want to be remembered for what you were wearing. A prominent accessory could distract the employer from what you are saying. All they might remember is that flower pin, the girl with the flower pin, or that striped scarf. Also, pantsuits are fine for women. You should, all stick, you should also stick with blue or black. And your shoes should be closed-toed and a low heel with neutral hose. For both men and women, start, try to style your hair conservatively. Don't wear any perfume or body spray, as your interviewer may be allergic. Again, you want to avoid any distractions. 
should carry as little as possible with you. You don't want to be in the interview situation sort of fumbling with bags and purses and all that kind of stuff. Try to consolidate your items into one briefcase or over-the-shoulder bag. And for women, try to avoid bringing a purse as well as a bag. You should have something to write with and something to write on. Also, have some copies of your resume and a list of references in case you're asked for them. You should store your cell phone in your bag and turn it completely off so it can't even vibrate during the interview. Remember, you don't want any distractions. And I know this sounds like mom, but get a good night's rest. Try to prepare well for the interview, but then do something relaxing the night before, such as reading a favorite book or listening to favorite music. Eat a good breakfast if it's a morning interview. And try to stay hydrated as well. If your interview is over a meal, order something simple that can be cut with a knife and fork, ideally, to avoid handling your food and getting messy. Okay, we're at the interview. Now what happens? You should plan to arrive at least 15 minutes before the interview is scheduled to start. Now, for any reason you anticipate being late, you should call and let the interviewer know what the situation is, but you should endeavor to be 15 minutes early. When you arrive at the interview site, you should greet everyone you meet on site courteously and with a firm handshake and smile. As soon as you arrive on the site, you are being judged by everyone you meet. This includes receptionists, other employees, and even janitors. If for some reason you would mistreat someone, it will get back to your interview. You would be surprised at how fast office gossip does travel. Also, you should be ready for any last minute changes of scheduling or personnel. Sometimes interviewers may pull in another colleague who you do not expect and have not researched. Don't panic. Sometimes in interviews you have to go with the flow. Just be confident in yourself no matter what happens. So during the interview, there are three major topic areas that are going to be covered. Skills and traits, behavioral or situational questions, and your technical skills and expertise. Okay. So the very first question you will probably be asked, or one of the first few questions you'll be asked is, tell me about yourself. Virtually every interview starts with this question. It's often called, have you ever heard of the phrase or elevator speech, which is something that uh, means if you're in an elevator with something traveling up, you could tell them about yourself in about 45 seconds to one minute during that elevator ride. So how about a 45 second to one minute answer prepared? But what you should do is start where you find yourself in your career now, something brief about where you've come from career-wise, not your hometown, and where you would like to go. And that is how you see yourself filling the position you are interviewing for. What will you bring to the position? Will you contribute relationship or client acquisition, financial plan development, financial planning support? You have to think about these things before you arrive at the interview. You will be asked to elaborate on your strengths and weaknesses. This isn't the time, though, to air your dirty laundry. What you should do is choose something that, when taken to an extreme, actually becomes a strength and tell them how you are working to overcome the problem. So, for example, you can say you tend to take on too many projects, which at first seems like a strength. Well, that's good. You show initiative. But if it's taken too far, you could get behind and not complete all the projects that you've taken on. But you can also say that you're working on that issue by learning how to prioritize and helping yourself to delegate when you can. So you will be asked why you want the position. And what you don't want to do is say anything negative about your current or most recent employer. You may simply say that you are looking for a change and a new challenge rather than wanting to get away from your current situation. How 
do you differ from your competition? Now, what you don't want to do is badmouth your potential competition, but you do want to emphasize what you have to offer the company. Think about the fact that they're looking to solve some sort of problem, and you have the solution to that problem. You will also be asked to describe some major career achievements and milestones. You should demonstrate a record of progressive successes. And even if you are a new professional, you can draw on any past job experience as well as any educational achievements. These are just as valid. They probably want to know, do you work better independently or as a team? You may have a preference but I think you want to demonstrate flexibility as well. You should know your audience. If the firm is set up to work in teams, you will want to emphasize that if that's the type of position you want, for example. How do you handle stress? This may be something they want to know. Because the financial services industry is somewhat unpredictable, which can lead to stress. It's often said that the folks that are in this industry have one of the most stressful jobs you could ever have. You'll want to describe your positive coping mechanisms, as well as how you organize your time at work to minimize last-minute decision-making. And then also, you will probably be asked something related to what are the biggest opportunities and the biggest challenges that financial professionals face in today's market. And by becoming a super fan of your field, as I mentioned earlier, you will know this you'll know what the biggest opportunities and challenges the industry faces. Also, you can comment on how that specific employer fits into those challenges and opportunities. Is it positioned to succeed? And how will you contribute to that success? So that's really skills and traits. And you know, this is sort of a, a highlight of what you'll be asked, but that covers a good portion of what you were probably asked in terms of skills and traits. And now we move on to behavioral or situational questions. You will likely be asked these types of questions during your interview. And what you'll want to do is use the STAR method for answering. Situation, task, actions, and results. I'll demonstrate this in a minute. What the interviewer wants to know is how have you acted in the past as they tend to believe that past behavior is an indicator of future behavior, as I had said earlier. So when answering, think of the STAR method in your mind, describe the general situation you were faced with, situation, what tasks were involved in the situation, task, the actions you took to make it happen, action, and the results that followed. Now here's a list of questions that you could possibly be asked in a financial services related interview. How do you make your clients feel that you are someone to trust with their money? Can you describe your ethical responsibility to a client regarding monetary risk? How do you choose investments and how often do you adjust portfolios? How have you maintained your customer base? What is your investment approach? Describe your process of developing a plan for your clients. Let's take the first question and answer it using the STAR method. How do you make your clients feel that you are someone to trust with their money? So the situation is, or you can say the situation was, you had a new client that you were meeting for the very first time. So the tasks that were involved is you had to build rapport, establish trust, and then persuade the client to take you on as their financial advisor. The actions you took were you showed the client some examples, how you would work with them to establish their goals and meet them, and you described your track record in the field. You pulled in some positive comments from past supervisor reviews as evidence of your trustworthiness. And the result? The client signed on with you and gave you $20 million to invest. That is definitely a successful STAR method. So your technical skills and expertise they'll want to know as well. Your personal traits are very important as the interview assesses whether you're a good fit for the position, but they also want to know that you have technical knowledge of the field. So in addition to listing the licenses you hold, you'll probably be asked to answer some technical questions about the field, 
or provide a sample of your work. They may also want to know your knowledge of topic areas, such as estate planning or taxes. They may also want to know about active and passive investing, valuing a customer in financial terms, short-term versus long-term investment options and tools, creating sales reports as well as other reports, budgeting practices concerning a retirement forecast, and a sample financial, financial plan. Okay, so you have been grilled at this point. Now it's time to turn the tables. Interviewing is a two-way street. You are interviewing them, as much as they are interviewing you. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, but it's the absolute truth. You're there to see for yourself firsthand whether you want to work for this company. You must have questions to ask of the interviewer. The death knell of any interview, and I hear this from recruiters all the time, is not having any questions to ask the employer because the employer will get the impression that you're not really interested in knowing any details about them and you haven't taken the time to research the company. Asking questions will help you assess if this is the right opportunity for you. The interview is really the only place to find out if you truly want to work with them. You're finally meeting them face to face and you're finally getting a sense of who they are and who you're going to be working with. So ask yourself, can you picture yourself working there and for that person? And did you get a good gut feeling about your future supervisor if you're meeting them? Were the other employees friendly? What was the pace of the office? Asking questions shows your real interest in the company. So here are some questions you may want to ask among others. What do you like most about working here? What is the company's management style? What do you like about the company's vision? What is the company culture? Can you tell me about advancement opportunities? Who will be doing my evaluations and how often will they occur? Who will I be working closely with? What types of projects will I be assigned to on a daily basis? What is the timeline for hiring this position? That question is especially important. You want to know where they are in the hiring process and how soon it will take for them to get back to you. What are the benefits the company offers? May I have a tour of the office, if the, op if the interview is at the office where you will be located? You could also ask, you know, you're starting or enrolled in CFP, do you reimburse for successful completion of coursework? Or I'd like to take the CFP exam in six months, do you allow any time off to prepare? Most topics are fair game. However, salary is off limits. Let the interviewer bring up the salary topic. I know you are supremely curious about what your compensation will be, but most typically conversations about salary are accompanied by job offers. So if you ask about salary, you're being a bit too presumptuous about the fact that you're getting the job. You should always let the employer take the lead on salary discussion. If they do bring up salary in a first interview, this is a pretty good indicator that you're a top candidate for the job. And typically the employer will lob the ball into your court and ask you to give a figure if the position carries a salary with it. You should know what the average salaries are for comparable positions in your geographic area and company type. If you are asked to give a number, give a range of five to $10,000 and say you're willing to negotiate. Your range should be based on your current salary plus approximately 10%. It's fair to ask if there are bonuses offered or other forms of compensation, such as tuition stipends or commuting vouchers, but also you should ask what their compensation structure is. The financial services industry is a bit unique in that some positions could be salaried, but they could also be a temporary salary. So they'll give you a salary for six months and then after that it's strictly commissioned. It could also be salary plus bonuses. Or it could all be commissions and fees strictly and no salary. And if salary is non-negotiable, you should ask about other benefits which could be negotiable. 
And finally, follow-up. As I mentioned on the last slide, be sure to ask what the timeline for hiring the position is. You should always ask what the next step will be in the hiring process so you can structure your follow-up schedule. You should gauge your follow-up time by the timeline you were given, but the best follow-up call is made within a week of your interview. You should always send the thank you note the day or after the day of or after your interview. An email is fine. Although isn't it nice to get a personalized note in the mail with a stamp on it? I think so. When you're writing your thank you note, personalize it by briefly discussing something that was brought up in the interview that you want to reiterate. Also express your interest in continuing in the process. Now if for some reason you have decided not to continue of the process, in the process, it is still appropriate to send a thank you letter. However, you can sort of omit your enthusiasm for the position and simply state that you thank them for taking the time to meet with you and you enjoyed the conversation. It's really important not to burn any bridges in your field. So I want to describe now some Career Center resources and then we'll move on to uh, questions and answers. We have, a, we have job listings from a very large diversity of employers. I mentioned a bunch of different types of employers earlier, considered, um, including you know, wirehouses, independent broker-dealers, registered investment advisors, and so on. And we really have a great diversity of employers. There's also articles related to your job search. So you'll find information on resumes, job search correspondence, interviewing, and that sort of thing. There's a job agent capability, which you may be familiar with from other job sites, where you can set up an alert based on jobs that you're interested in with different criteria. There are confidentiality options. So some of you that are searching but are, of course, still employed, may not, may, you may, your employer may be searching on the same site. So you may not want your contact information shared, but you can still look at positions and apply. Of course, you can upload your resume to share with employers and make it searchable. And I also personally offer one-on-one -on -one job coaching and mock interviews. So remember I said earlier, you don't want to use the interview, the formal interview, as a practice interview. You want to reserve that for mock interview. So what we will do is set up some time together by telephone. Um, you'll provide you with a job description. I'll brainstorm some questions that you could be asked based on that job description, and then we'll go through it, and um, you'll answer the questions, and I'll give you feedback immediately about how your answers sort of stack up to how you should be answering that question. So it's a great way, you should always practice when you're, before you go into an interview, um, you know, really give it a lot of thought as to what you're going to say and say it out loud so that you can hear yourself say it, practice it, and you won't be stumbling when you're actually asked the question during the interview. Okay, so we do have some questions. So let me just um, go over to the question and answer area um, so that I can address those. Someone's asking sort of a logistical question, will we receive a copy of the presentation? We are recording the presentation right now. So um, what we'll do is make the recording available on the website so you'll be able to access that. Okay, so we have a question. How do you respond to the question, why are you leaving your current firm? That's a very good question. Um, again, what I want to emphasize is that you don't want to badmouth your current employer. Um, but what you want to do is emphasize how the position you're applying for fits into your long-term career plan. So you really want to just say that, you know, while you have um, appreciated the time at your current employment, you're ready for a new challenge, you're very interested in the current position for whatever reasons it may be that that current position um, appealed to you. So again, you want to kind of focus it on the future. Um, as opposed to the past. So try not to badmouth your employer or badmouth the position that you're in, 
even if in the in you know if we're being truthful, even if it is a bad situation, you want to try to make lemonade out of lemons and just say you know you're really looking for that next new challenge and whatever it is about the company that really uh, appeals to you. Okay. So this one uh, is sort of two questions. Um, many companies are very hesitant about publishing extensive information about their business model and rarely post bios about key personnel. The LinkedIn is a good idea but can also be limiting. Do you have specific alternative ideas on how to get specifics on the company? Well, as far as people go, you, know, you can do some investigating on Google to see if they can come up. But LinkedIn is a pretty good resource, I would say, for finding out personal information. Um, I would say industry publications, the press, newspapers, articles, that sort of thing, you know, researching um, if they've ever been written up before in a publication. And if you actually go to a physical library, a librarian can help you do that. There are ways to search, um, you know, the earned media to see if people have been talking about that company. So um, there definitely are ways around it. Okay, our next question. Okay, um, so this person's asking, I've been in interviews and the interviewer had no connection to the department where the job will be performed. What types of questions can the job seeker ask the interviewer who may not have any idea of the vacant job? Okay, so this is a situation where you're interviewing with HR as opposed to um, the current supervisor people that actually have intimate knowledge of the position. Now, these HR recruiters are kind of trained to know the ins and outs of the position, so I would say it's fair to ask um, any kind of similar questions that you would ask of the person that you're going to be interviewing with who would be your supervisor. And I would say you can also ask if you are going to have further interviews where you could get some of your questions answered if the person isn't able to um, answer your questions that you've been asking. Okay, so there's a question here. How do you handle a broad question such as, have you had any experience with marketing? Is it okay to ask to be more specific? There are so many different interpretations of marketing. Okay, yes, absolutely. You can always ask clarifying questions. So if, if the question is a little bit um, vague or too broad, you can definitely ask, you know, in when you talk about marketing, are you talking, you know, inside marketing, outside marketing? Can you be more specific? So absolutely, you can definitely ask clarifying questions. Okay, so here's a question about salary. What if the interviewer asks you about what salary you have had or what salary you need? So again, when you're talking about salary, of course, you can't sort of lie or sugarcoat the salary you currently have, so you have to be honest about that. But in terms of what you need, I always say to aim for about 10% above the current salary you are, especially if the position is um, a promotion of any kind. Okay, so here is another question. Do you have recommendations for websites website listings to find comparable salaries. There are some good ones out there. One of them is actually salary.com. Uh, you can query for different positions. Um, another is quintcareers.com, Q-U-I-N-T, Quint Careers. That also has some great salary information. And another one is Glassdoor, although I believe with Glassdoor you have to be, you have to purchase some kind of membership, but there are sort of smaller packages that you can purchase. You don't have to purchase a full-blown Glassdoor membership to get all industry information, but that's a good website as well. Okay, so here's a question. What do you think of the old adage of being overqualified? Do you think that the interviewer may be a bit intimidated if the job seeker has more education than they do? How would you prepare for that contingency? That's definitely a concern. Um, I think what you have to do in an interview is just emphasize how you meet the qualifications that are stated. So 
you know, depending on the question that you're asked, you don't have to go sort of beyond the scope of what they're asking you. You just want to definitely say that you meet the qualifications, you've done the requirements in the past, and this is how, and give some examples. So that will sort of demonstrate that you meet the qualifications and not necessarily going too far um, above what they are asking. So hopefully you can avoid that. Okay, there's a question, is the Career Center a free service? And yes, it is for the candidate. So there's no cost to create a candidate profile, post your resume, or search um, the job. Um, the only way we charge is for employers. So if employers are posting jobs, um, that is how we charge. So it is free for candidates. Okay, here's a question. Should a career, how should a career changer coming from an unrelated field tailor their resume and prepare to answer technical questions with little or no direct experience? So good question. For a career changer, what you want to do is emphasize your education as opposed to your past experience. Um, you can also pull out in your, um, you can do a professional summary at the top, pulling out some of the characteristics you think would be applicable to the job that you're applying to. So make sure you put the education, your certification, um, or certification program you're pursuing at the very top, and de-emphasize your work experience by putting it a little bit lower on the resume. Okay, so let's see. How do you find information on small private firms, especially if they do not have a LinkedIn presence? It's a good question. I would say you may have to rely on their company website to get the information that you need to prepare yourself for the interview. And then if there's any earned media you can find about them, you can also use that as well. Um, but yeah, some people may not have a LinkedIn profile, but LinkedIn is more for individuals as opposed to um, companies necessarily, although there are companies on there. So really LinkedIn, I was referring to that to get some intelligence on who you would be interviewing with. Okay, here's one. If you have had a hiatus while you studied for the CFP, is there a best way to phrase such a period of unemployment? Um, yes, and employers are going to anticipate breaks in employment. It's not unusual in this, in this um, you know, sort of employment field that you would have breaks in employment. You can simply state that you're studying for your CFP and you want to take that time to fully commit yourself to that process. So I think that's perfectly fine. Again, someone's asking about how to explain breaks from the industry. And I would just say, honesty is the best policy. So if you took time off to care for an elderly parent, have a child, pursue some kind of other opportunity outside of the field, you can just simply say all of that. OK, so as a recent college grad who passed the CFP exam, can we place that information on our resume without the three years of relevant work experience? Yes, of course we know that passing the exam does not make you a CFP, but it does you put you further on the path to becoming a CFP. So I think at the very top of the resume, that's something you can indicate that the CFP exam has been passed and the education requirements have been met. Okay. What is your best advice for older people getting into the CFP world? No previous financial planning experience, but trying to pass the CFP exam in July 2015. Well, good luck on the exam, first of all, I want to say that. Um, study hard, it's not easy, um, but it is doable. So again, if you don't have experience, you want to emphasize your education and um, your knowledge of the field on the resume and during the interview process. And again, remember, if you've got the interview, they're definitely interested in you, so something about you is definitely appealing. So be confident. OK, let's see. More questions. Thank you so much for all your wonderful questions. And a lot of these, you know, if we, if we don't get to all of them, and again, if some of them are more, you know, personal to your situation and you really want a little more coaching, I recommend calling 
And I'll, my contact information is actually on the next slide. I'll put that up while we're talking here so you have a chance to write it down. There we go. You can certainly give me a call. We can schedule some time to kind of work through these issues and determine what your really good course of act, action was going to be. Okay, here's a question. Is there a good way to note that this is a career change, however you have had financial, a financial background in other industries? I think what you'll probably want to do is structure your resume so that you have a, a professional summary at the top that indicates your financial sort of related experience that doesn't indicate it elsewhere on the resume or just pulls it out of elsewhere on the resume. And so then under those other jobs when you're doing your bullet points, just make sure that um, the financial sort of related um, information is at the top of your bullet point. Okay, what's our next question? Okay. There's a lot of uh, questions here I'm seeing about um, career changers um, and how to, you know, break into the field. Um, you know, you pass the exam, but you don't have experience. You're new to the financial services industry. Um, how to explain the lack of experience. Um, again, you know, you have to sort of emphasize your good qualities and what transferable skills you would have to offer. So, um, you know, for example, your management experience um, in the past. Um, your analytical skills, anything you've learned from your educational process, you know, any of that would be related that you could say would be related to your um, to your um, to the current position that you're applying for. Okay, here's a question: During the interview, do firms ever pretend to be a prospective client and test your skills as an advisor? That's definitely within the realm of possibility. Um, you know, because it's sort of similar to a situational question. Um, they may sort of give you advice or do a role, want to do a role play, um, and then have you sort of answer how you would interact with that client. So yeah, that's definitely in bounds, um, and so I'd be prepared for that. Okay, let's see. Here's a question. Okay, how would you respond to the question of are you pursuing other opportunities or do you have any other offers either now or on the horizon? It's a very good question and some people use other offers as sort of leverage to sort of prompt the employer to give you an offer. So um, I think you want to say, you know, that you're in an active job search and you are pursuing other opportunities, but that the opportunity that you're interviewing right now is definitely one that you're very interested in. So, um, you know, you don't want to say, yes, I'm pursuing other opportunities and I hope that they work out instead of this one, obviously. But I think it's fair to say, you know, there's definitely um, other opportunities that you're pursuing. Um, and that, but that if you did get this position, it's something that we, you would want to stay in. Okay. Here's a question. Should I look into the interviewer's eyes the whole time during the interview? Yes, this is very important. Um, maintaining eye contact is sort of a sign of confidence. So if you're looking elsewhere or down at your hands or something like that, it indicates that you're sort of unsure. So it is important to give good eye contact. Um, you can look away to sort of ponder your answer, but when you're talking to the employer, you should be looking directly at them. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, here's another question. If you're making a career change and you've have been without a job for a while, how do you talk about the past experience and salary requirements? I mean, you have to draw on what you have to offer. 
So even if the experience is in the past, you can definitely draw on that. Um, and the salary, you should talk about, again, remember to ask about how their, their um, compensation is structured, whether it's fee only or commission based, salary plus bonuses and so on, or straight salary, and whether that salary is permanent or temporary. So once you find all of that out, you should have done your research on what the going rate is for the type of position in your geographic area. Um, and so then you'll be able to kind of give an intelligent range of what you're interested in. Okay, let's see. Um, there's a, another question. Can you say you passed the CFP exam on LinkedIn without three years of relevant work experience? Yes, I would say you can say you passed the exam, um, but that does not indicate any past work and any relevant work experience, so that's certainly fine to do that. Okay. Let's see. Is it better to network or use online applications in the financial industry job search? When you're job searching, you have to use multiple avenues. And networking is the number one way people get jobs. So I think it's important to use job boards. I think our job board is a very valuable asset to you. But it's also very important to um, network and use that resource as well. So you have to use multiple sort of search strategies um, in order to have a successful job search. You can't just rely on one um, method of job searching. Okay, do you have any advice on your LinkedIn profile and what to put on one's profile? Actually, it's interesting that you ask because we're going to have a webinar on creating a LinkedIn profile in the future. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and I would just say that it's very important to include, you know, information from your resume um, and have people endorse you. That's really important. So, you know, list the skills that you have, as many as possible, and have people endorse you. Okay, let's see. Okay, where will this webinar be located on the CFP website? It's going to be on the Career Center page, so if you go to the CFP.net website and click on Career Center, it's going to be listed right on that home page there. Okay. How should I decide which company to go with if I'm torn between two companies? It's a really good question. I think you have to sort of go through a list of what your sort of main requirements are and what you're most interested in doing in the job functions. And, it, it, and there are other factors as well. I mean, you have to consider salary. You have to consider the commute. You want to consider the, the, the potential supervisor, the structure, whether you'll be working independently or in teams, the overall financial health of the company you're applying to. So it's really a variety of factors, but you have to consider work-life balance, you know, is there telecommuting available, um, and, you know, what's, what your priorities really are. So you have to make kind of a list of um, priorities and um, determine which company sort of meets those priorities. Okay. Okay, here's one. If you receive an email telling you that you have been removed from consideration after applying to a position, is there a need to respond? Um, no, there's no real need to respond there. You just now know that you can pursue other positions and that you're out of the running. And then also, what if you have interviewed with someone and are sent an email stating the same thing? What would be the appropriate response back? I think. Um, if you have interviewed but you did receive a sort of rejection email, it's appropriate to, you know, just email them back and thank them for their time, um, you know, thank them for um, giving you the opportunity to interview, that you appreciate it, um, and you wish them luck on their, 
on their search. Okay. Here's a question about networking. When attending networking events, I will often bring my resume. This is great. Is it also important to bring a cover letter as well? No, when you're at a networking event, you are the cover letter. So you're going to be the walking, talking cover letter. Um, so just be prepared with that elevator speech. You know, as you're handing someone your resume, just talk briefly about yourself, what you have to offer, um, what you've done in the past briefly, maybe a highlight from your resume. Okay. Do you recommend joining the local SPA or et cetera, even if you're not currently an advisor? I do because, again, this is a part of becoming a super fan of the field. So, um, yeah, I do recommend memberships in industry um, associations, attending their conferences, their mixers, and that sort of thing. Um, it's really important, again, to become ingratiated into the field. So any kind of memberships you can have where you're going to be put in position to network with other professionals in the field are, is definitely a benefit to you. Okay, well thank you very much everyone for taking the time to listen in to the webinar. Um, and if, again, there's my contact information, um, landrews at cfpboard.org. Um, you can call me 202-379-2213 and the Career Center homepage is cfp.net slash career dash center. So again, thank you very much for um, participating in the webinar and please look out for future webinars that will be advertised on our website. Take care everyone.